Hi, this is Tony Mills, and you're listening to Metal Express Radio. Tony Mills, thank you very much for seeing Metal Express Radio. Recently, you just took over the microphone in uh, GNT, and uh, I must say I was um, I was surprised, but it was a pleasant surprise to see you taking over as an old, you know, shy and Siam fan. And it, it didn't take long before you you uh, took over. It wasn't quite as quick as it might seem. Um, because obviously a lot goes on behind the scenes um, so there was like several weeks of emails and phone calls and all that sort of thing um, and I, I recorded some TNT tracks in England um, actually against uh, the Madrid show which was the last show but they knocked out the vocal so I could slot the vocal back in um, as, a, as a sort of an idea of how it would sound uh, which sort of went down okay. Um, and then I went to Berlin uh, and met the band uh, in a hotel in Berlin. And we did a photo shoot and sat down and talked about things and uh, the possibilities and was it the, what, am I the right person? Was I the right person? Were they the right band for me? Uh, they obviously were. And I obviously was. And uh, we got on very well straight away. <laughs> Because they're as crazy as I am, so uh, it was um, a, a marriage made in hell, <laughs> really. So um, pretty much the, the conversation started maybe the beginning of May or maybe April or something. But um, I've been playing with the band now for four months, mm. so it pretty much clicked straight away. Uh, how well did you know the band from before? I mean, their music and their albums? Yeah, I mean, I was sitting, when I used to live further up north in England, when I was uh, 20 years old or whatever, listening to Knights of the New Thunder and um, sitting listening to that material in the early 80s. Uh, and actually, I was sat talking to Ronnie last night saying, I don't believe that 23 years ago I was sat listening to Knights of the New Thunder and now I'm sat here looking at you. This is some trippy shit going on here. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much, I didn't, I never followed the band. I followed lots of music. And so I used to listen to various tracks, completely unbeknown to the fact that it was TNT. Uh, I think maybe the first time I heard 10,000 Lovers and, and Caught Between the Tigers, I never knew it was TNT. Um, in fact, there was one strange thing. Um, there was a song called Tonight I'm Falling. Mm. And I've done like a lot of session work over the years for various rock bands. And I was utterly convinced that I'd done the backing vocals on that track. Uh, and it, it nagged at me for years who the band was, because I'd obviously forgotten the session. And it turned out that it was never me at all. It was actually Mr Harnell. And uh, that's strange, because we have a very close vocal range mm. uh, and it wasn't me at all which was very odd <laughs> so uh you must have been the the uh, perfect replacement for uh, Hanel because you have a, well the same range i'm sure you you can nail all the tnt songs without a problem um a lot of those vocals were sung 20 years ago and i had an extremely similar range to tony Harnell 20 years ago and i think he's has probably depreciated the same way as mine has over 20 years mm. I think um, all the important people put a lot of stock in what notes are where and when, but I've got a personal opinion about that. And um, the most important thing at the end of the day is the song and how the song comes over. And does it make the song a better song or does it make it just a personal performance? And I'm not really into personal performances, I'm into making songs better songs. And I'm not Tony Harnell, and I have no aspiration to be so at all. I'm a very different person. And um, uh, an, an element has come out in the band that, uh, I don't know whether it was there before or not, but um, it's very obvious that, that it's a very earthy, gutsy rock and roll band. And that suits me fine. Mm. And that's what's going on here. Will you interpret the uh, old TNT songs your way, I mean, make your own uh, vocal lines and, and stuff like that, or will you keep it the traditional way? I think uh, you could call that 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, I've got no great desire to change things for the sake of change. You don't fix things when they're not broken. If you've got a great song, hey, let's sing a great song. 
yeah? Mm. If there's uh, something that suits me, just sing it a different way. I'll sing it a different way. Um, if, as long as it's for the betterment of the song. Mm. Have you gone through the whole back catalogue for TNT now, or do you just know the, the uh, tracks that you're doing live? No, there, were, there really wasn't a lot of point um, in going through, trawling through albums of songs that I may never use. Um, in, it's a very forward-thinking band, to be honest. They've, they've netted together the songs they want to play live, and they want that the way it should be, and they're very meticulous about that. They're, they're a very clever, hard-working band, I have to give them that. They want what they want, they get what they want, and that's fine. And everything's going forwards. We're not going backwards. We're not going to trawl through albums from 20 years ago, picking out the odd song here and there. That's not going to happen. The strongest set we could deliver is we will probably play tonight. Mm. And uh, moving forward, he probably won't change for a while. Maybe one song here or there. But within a matter of months, uh, new material will appear. Do you uh, perform TNT material now that you're in the band that the band didn't perform before you joined? Uh, have you picked up new songs that they haven't thought of for a while? No. <coughs> no, we just work to expand the set um, from a certain group of songs uh, to something that worked live and we changed it already six or seven times. Um, and we've ended up with what we've got tonight. So. Mm -hmm. What? Is it like affronting a band like TNT? Uh, they have their old fans, you know, and they're used to Tony Hanel. Is that a, a tough task? I mean, to to front the audience as a new vocalist. You have to ask the fans that. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you know. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's TNT or any other band. If a band has been together that long, everybody's got used to what they like mm. and what they love. And it's very difficult to, to change that without upsetting everybody. But um, I'm a one-man mission to change that because TNT will move forward. And um, uh, it is a bit of a journey music. And if, if people don't want to stay on the bus, I mean, it's a difficult thing to say, but that's up to them because the band won't stop. It'll carry on and it'll find its own direction at the end of the day. They'll write another album, another album. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll still be here. If everybody wants to cry tears about 10 years ago, I guess that's up to them. You mentioned that we will hear some new material very soon. Uh, does that mean you, you're in a writing process right now? Yes. We started writing um, a new album last week, uh, which is very interesting, actually. It's, got a, it's very diverse, it's uh, shifting in various directions from what you would expect from a, a middle of the, not a middle of the road, but a stock TNT product. Um, I think it's more hip. Mm -hmm. um, it's still got plenty of balls, thank God, otherwise <laughs> I'd be on the plane home. <laughs> but um, it's got a lot of commercial aspects to it. Um, it's early days. And I think we'll probably work um, at uh, the studio in Nyhagen and probably um, some work in Spain and Denmark. But I think we're looking to um, produce the finished article maybe in February. Mm -hmm. uh, it must have been quite exciting the first time you, the two of you uh, sat down to, to make music but because you hadn't been writing together before. I mean, uh, what did that feel like? How long have you got? <laughs> it's a completely and utterly different writing process than I'm used to. I'm, I've, I've worked with a band for 20 odd years that have uh, presented me with finished music that I've always written uh, lyric and melody to. And that's the way it works with that band. It doesn't work that way with TNT. Um, it's very much a let's sit around the table and gel and get on and have a party and hey let's write some songs at the same time and it all happens together like that which is something I'm completely alien to but uh, it's cool though um, and it doesn't happen in 10 minutes it happens over about 15 hours <laughs> <laughs> it's a long day but it's very constructive and artistic uh, and the integrity behind that is, is quite I have to support that 
It's a nice way to work. It's different from what I'm used to, but it's cool. So you're actually jamming uh, the new tracks, or to make the new tracks? No, we've been work well, sort of, but we've been working on keyboard and guitar patterns um, and, and bouncing various sections together that, that work well against existing melodies that we've come up with. Uh, it's a bit of a bowl of soup. Everything goes in, and uh, and it all sort of it either works or it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, we put it to one side and forget it. If it works, we expand it, and then we get to the point where we put it down on a recorder, and then. I will go home to England uh, and um, and record the the vocal ideas that we came out with in Oslo mm. and bring them back with me next week. It's going to be uh, quite a slow process, but but we'll get a lot done if you know what I mean. It's mm. a difficult thing to explain. So uh, you make the music and the vocalizer. You throw time. in some at the same time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In this band, it happens at the same time. Mm -hmm. Which is not what I'm used to, but uh, but that's fine. Mm. Yeah. Uh, will you be writing all the lyrics for for the album? No, I wouldn't. I don't know. I mean, uh, it really depends. Like I said before, it's what's best for the song. Um, if I come out with various lyrical ideas for the song, and somebody goes, "Well, that's a sack of shit," then I'll go, "Great! Did you do a better one?" And, and if they did, then cool. If they didn't, then we'll work on it until everybody's satisfied. Um, I've, got, I've got it. It's new for me. I've got to find out mm. as we go. You've produced a few of the albums you've done uh, before yourself, as far as I know. Uh, will you produce uh, any of the new TNT material? No. No, I wouldn't have thought so. No, we'll bring in an external producer. Any particular reason for that? Um existing preferences within the band that were there before I came in, which I'm quite happy about. I'm quite happy to work with engineer producers that have got a lot of technical knowledge and song arrangement ideas that musicians themselves would never think of, especially editing um, and big production plans. Uh, I'm quite happy to work with producers like that. You actually quit uh, your old band Shy uh, when joining TNT. Was that something you were forced to do, or was that a tough decision to to make? Well, it was neither. I wasn't forced to do it, and it wasn't a tough decision. Um, it was an easy decision, and uh, uh, I'd spent a long time trying to get somewhere with the band, and having got nowhere. Um, having an offer put on my plate like this wasn't a difficult decision to make. Uh, they wanted me to stay with the band and just come to Norway and see how it worked out, but I'm not that sort of person. That's not fair. Um, I don't like leaving things hanging in the air. So I, I'd cut free, and um, and that was the end of that. Hmm. They already have a new vocalist anyway, which I'm very happy about. Really? So... Hmm. For those uh, who'd like to, to check out what you've done before, what would you recommend? I mean, uh, I like a few of the Shy albums and uh, the two Syme albums that I think are really great. Uh, what would you recommend? Um, from a personal point of view, the second Syme album, Prayer, was uh, a bit of a highlight, really, for me. It was a six-month recording, um, which I was very satisfied with when it was finished. More than anything I've ever done with Shy anyway, um, because it had got a lot of diversity and balls to it. Um, Shy had got a lot of strong points, but they were a bit of a bit of a sit on the fence band, and could never really commit themselves to whether they wanted to be a, a soft keyboard based AOR band or whether they'd got the balls to to go guitar based like bands like Queensrÿche or Dokken or whatever. Um, they never really made that decision. Um, so when I was on my own doing things, it was always a guitar-based thing. Uh, so if somebody wants to go and have a look at the past, then prayer from Siam would be a good starting point. Mm. Uh, maybe a couple of the latter Shy albums, yeah. Um, I think uh, Siam's music uh, reminds me a bit of uh, Queensryche. Have mm. they been an inspiration? 
Well, it wasn't mine, oddly enough. It was um, it was the bass player in the studio, and we spent a lot of time listening, far too much time listening to Queensryche <laughs> while we were recording, months on end. I think uh, I think it had an effect, but it wasn't a detrimental one. Uh, there, there are a lot of elements in there that are, that belong to Siam themselves, but a lot of people have said the same. But I still thought it was the best damn thing I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you also uh, did a couple of solo albums. Uh, do you think you will do any more solo in the future? In the future? Um, I've got enough tracks and a contract to record another album for next year, but I doubt I'll have the time now. And I wasn't expecting TNT to pop up. I don't know, I have got a contract to do another album, but um, I think TNT is going to take far too much time up. So I'm, it's really not a priority. You uh, did the last show with Ashai on this uh, Polar Festival where oh, right, yeah. Tony did his last gig with uh, TNT. Uh -huh. uh, what was that like? I mean, to, to leave your own band and take over the microphone from Mr. Harnell? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, I, I had no intention of getting on stage at all. In fact, I'd, I was sat out in the audience in the middle of the field watching TNT. I'd done about four or five shows or something, so I thought, this is going to be great. I'm going to sit and watch Tony now with TNT. I'm just going to chill, have a beer, sit in the middle of a field. And then the tour manager comes trotting around the fields. The band want you to get up. I went, no, <laughs> no. Okay. And I thought, well, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or whatever. Um, she said, well... The opportunity won't come again. I said, no, that's true. Uh, okay. So I went up the side of the stage and um, he, we, the band had got to the point where the, the, there wasn't very much left of the set, maybe one or two songs or something. And uh, I just sort of stood on the side of the stage and um, <laughs> and he came over to me and... Uh, and he bowed down and gave me the microphone, which I thought was very odd. And I said, thank you very much, and <laughs> the mic off him. Um, and then we sang Harley Davidson, which I don't think it was a song that he liked. Um, but he wanted to do Everyone's a Star, I think, but I didn't even know what that was at the time anyway. <laughs> um, so it was a bit strange. Uh, and then we sort of talked in the dressing room uh, afterwards. Uh, and there was certainly no animosity at all. Uh, in, in fact, quite the contrary. We got on quite well. Um, but I only saw the guy very briefly, maybe off stage, maybe an hour, and then I've never seen him since. Mm. Um, hell, I mean, what a great singer. You know, I've got nothing but admiration for the guy. He's a different guy from me. He sings a different way from me, and all power to the guy. He's great at what he does, you know. And hopefully, I'm sure he is going to go on to do bigger and better things in his own career that suit him well. So. In a couple of days you're going to England. Uh, uh -huh. Is that your first gig with uh, TNT in England? That's right, yeah. Mm. It's um, headlining a festival in um, in the Midlands, in the industrial Midlands, uh, with, um, m well, Magnum, uh, mm. Bob Catley and uh, various other bands. Um, a lot of people are a lot of people have a lot of expectations, having not seen TNT there for a long time. But the press has been quite comprehensive, and uh, so there's going to be a lot of expectant people. So, yeah, this is a, a good warm-up for that tonight. Well, we've got another gig tomorrow night as well before we fly out, so we're sleeping in the airport all night tomorrow night. That'll be fun. <laughs> Uh, TNT actually never played very much in England. Do you, do you think you can open some doors for them? I mean, you're a known person over there. I uh, think the English market is relatively closed, to be honest, and not just to bands like TNT. I think to a lot of bands, um, it's a commercial market that's company-driven, um, which is company-driven from America and Japan and Europe. And for the bands in England, I feel so sorry for because they will never be able to get out of the hole unless they go abroad first and make an impression over there. It's a long-standing story in England, unless you're a pop group, and then everybody loves it. For rock bands, you have to tread the mill, and uh, the mill isn't big enough in England. It's a lot bigger in places like Scandinavia. Mm. There are a lot more gigs here. Even tonight's venue, perfect for a rock band to play. 
they could do with 50 of those venues in England just to promote rock music because there are none like that that I've ever been to. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I don't know whether I'll be able to help promote TNT in England. I think TNT are probably better off here and in Europe and in Japan than in England. It's a, it's a relatively small market. And um, I've approached agents and people already and they have already said it's a limited market. Mm. So we might not be interested mm. in that sort of music at all. Uh, TNT almost broke in, in the States, just like Shy. Mm. Um, but I think that's history. It's not possible to do that anymore. So your market will, will be uh, Europe and, and Japan in the future, or will you try to hit the US again? Oh, I have to be diplomatic here, don't I? Um, I think TNT's future lies in Europe, Japan, um, well, the Middle East and Japan and Australia. I don't think it lies in England. And I'm not that sure it lies in America either. Mm. So um, when it comes to the future, uh, TNT will be your main focus as long as uh, you feel well in the band and uh, that your fans appreciate what you're doing? Well, it hasn't taken me and Ronnie long to, to um, realise that we get on really well. Um, that's the first thing. Well, it's just as well because I'm living in his house. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's quite happy about that. Um, yeah, I don't have any other priorities at all um, or any major goals apart from singing for TNT. In fact, uh, I really haven't spent much time in England or with my family in the last four months. Mm. I've pretty much been in Norway all the time. Um, and it's obviously where the future is and it's, it feels like a pretty good one as well. So.